What impressions form when you observe a tall figure cloaked in a white gown? The medical professional before you has preserved numerous lives and stands prepared to save many more if required. Maybe you experience profound admiration for the expert neurosurgeon. It's hard for many to conceive that a physician responsible for rescuing so many could just as readily end a life. Toronto, the capital city of Ontario in Canada, is a vibrant urban centre known as the country's economic and business hub. It boasts a varied terrain, featuring thick woodlands, parks, rivers and lakes. It is home to about 6.5 million people. A 400-mile journey southwest takes you to Windsor, situated right on the banks of the Detroit River, opposite the American city of the same name. This city became the new home for two Croatian emigrants, Joseph and Anna Frick, who found employment at rival car manufacturers, Chrysler and General Motors. The couple was blessed with two daughters. Their firstborn, Carolina, arrived in 1970, and their second, Alana, in 1977. Alana was seen as a blessing by her parents, following two failed pregnancies and medical advice against the possibility of more children. Both daughters were bright, with the younger one showing a passion for reading and achieving academic excellence in middle school. Alana dedicated her youth to reading, dancing, and was particularly driven about financial success, motivated by her parents' diligence. She worked in the cornfields around Windsor every summer, aiming to earn enough to relieve her parents from the need to work. Elena naturally excelled in mathematics and sciences, harboring aspirations to pursue a medical career. During her final year of high school, she fell deeply in love with a peer, Matthew Reno. They were inseparable, sharing all activities. Their relationship continued to flourish at the University of Windsor, where they became known as a content and steadfast pair. In 1999, Alana began her medical studies at the University of Ottawa, maintaining a long-distance relationship with Matthew. However, the distance proved too challenging, leading to their eventual separation despite previous discussions of marriage. Throughout the next few years, Alana chose to remain unattached. However, in 2003, a casual evening spent playing pool in a hospital lounge in Ottawa marked a pivotal moment when she encountered Mohammed Shamji, a newcomer to the hospital's staff and a student in the reconstructive surgery department of a nearby clinic. Mohammed's interest in Alana was piqued, leading him to inquire about her with several nurses and eventually obtain her contact information. Mohammed, like the knowledgeable Elana Frick, was an academic achiever. He had attended the esteemed Ashbury College before moving on to Yale University, where he completed a master's degree in organic chemistry. Despite being academically talented, Shamji was introverted and socially awkward, which often hindered his romantic endeavors. His initial interaction with Alana was no different. He was clumsy and inept in conversation, even though Alana tried to engage him with talks about literature. However, his ambition and intelligence ultimately won her over. Their dating began, but it wasn't long before issues emerged. Alana was deeply in love with Muhammad, feeling undeserving of him, especially as he juggled his relationship with her while seeing another woman he had met in college. This duality led to discomfort and disputes early on, making their relationship seem one-sided. Alana frequently lavished Muhammad with gifts and surprises, whereas he appeared disinterested and passive, lacking enthusiasm for a romantic engagement with her. His attitude even caused Alana's parents concern, as they did not wish for their daughter to be linked with someone like him. Alana ended their relationship twice within the first year, yet each time, he managed to convince her to return. Pregnancy can come as a surprise, and for Mohammed and Alana, it indeed arrived during a particularly tumultuous period in their relationship. Coming from a Muslim background with Somali heritage, Shamji found himself in a difficult position. His faith required him to be married before welcoming children, regardless of his personal desires. Ultimately, he chose to honor his traditions by formalizing his relationship with Alana. In September 2004, the couple exchanged vows and began their married life together in a home on Scout Street in Ottawa, securing positions in family medicine and neurosurgery, respectively. By January 2005, 
they were ready to celebrate the birth of their first daughter. However, the addition to the family did little to alter Muhammad's behavior. His dedication to his career remained unwavering, with his time consumed by work or study, neglecting the needs of his wife and newborn. His disconnection from family life grew, showing little to no interest in his wife and daughter's well-being. As time passed, the strain in Muhammad and Alana's marriage became more apparent. Alana's parents grew increasingly concerned about Muhammad's behavior, particularly after an incident where they overheard him verbally mistreating their daughter during a phone call. Alana considered divorce as a means to confront the situation, but she often found herself grappling with guilt following their disputes. By the summer of 2005, the bond between them had turned so volatile, with Muhammad's actions becoming increasingly unmanageable, that it culminated in physical aggression. He struck his wife, making her lip bleed. Consequently, he was thrust into a challenging predicament as the assault resulted in legal action against him. This occurred precisely when he was seeking a doctoral position at Duke University, and any legal conviction could have significantly impacted his academic status and professional future. Realizing the gravity of his actions, Muhammad implored his wife to retract the charges. He earnestly appealed to her, asking for forgiveness and to be taken back, stating that his existence would be meaningless without her. Following her decision to withdraw the charges, Muhammad agreed to a plea deal that imposed a year-long probation on him, and the situation started to improve. While this agreement halted his aggressive behavior, it also created a situation where future offenses could go unpunished. Following their reconciliation, Ilana went back to Muhammad. It was perplexing to many what bound her to him. She was bright, well-educated, financially autonomous, and had the backing of her family and friends. Yet her love for her husband and the hope that he would change kept her by his side. Unbeknownst to her, his motives were not rooted in love for her and their child, but in selfish desires and the pursuit of his own goals. Despite everything, Alana clung to the fleeting joys and the vision of a harmonious family life ahead. In the spring of 2005, Shamji was accepted into a prestigious biomedical engineering program at Duke University. Meanwhile, Ilana started her journey in a master's program for public policy. The couple relocated to North Carolina, embracing the bustling lifestyle of suburbia. Their young daughter was enrolled in daycare as they advanced their academic and professional endeavors. Three and a half years on, Mohammed wrapped up his doctoral degree, initially planned for five years, and Alana secured a notable scholarship that covered the bulk of her tuition expenses. Academically, they emerged as bright prospects in their respective fields. It was during this period that they welcomed their second daughter. Upon completing their studies in the summer of 2009, the now four-member family returned to Ottawa, Canada. Ilana embarked on her medical career at a local hospital, quickly establishing herself as a reputable family physician. Muhammad, with aspirations of becoming a neurosurgeon, pursued his studies with unwavering dedication. Their social media presence grew, showcasing a seemingly idyllic family life, yet the reality behind their online facade was starkly different. Ilana and Muhammad presented themselves as highly successful, deeply in love, and mutually supportive. Their posts included snapshots from opulent conferences worldwide, family outings, and a seemingly lavish lifestyle, suggesting a picture-perfect family. However, the reality within their home told a different story. Muhammad maintained a tight grip on Ilana, monitoring her friendships and demanding the removal of anyone he disapproved of. Ilana was required to get Muhammad's consent before sharing any photographs online. His domineering behavior slowly resurfaced, leading to conflicts that often concluded with him belittling her, criticizing her way of raising their children, and undermining her self-worth with harsh words. In 2011, Muhammad received a scholarship opportunity at a medical institution in Calgary's foothills, perfectly aligning with his dream of specializing in spinal surgery. This advancement necessitated a year-long, long-distance relationship for the couple. During Muhammad's periodic returns, a forgotten open email on the family computer unveiled his extramarital activities to Ilana, 
who discovered incriminating correspondences. Mohammed, confronted with the evidence, did not refute the allegations of his affair with a woman from Calgary and admitted to his actions. Understandably, this revelation distressed Elana, and despite her friend's unanimous counsel to pursue divorce, she chose to give their marriage another chance. Subsequently, the Shamji family relocated to Toronto, investing in a spacious $1.5 million home in North York, and contemplated expanding their family with a third child. While one viewed this as a potential to mend the familial bond, the other saw it as an opportunity to assert further dominance. Elana's pregnancy came to fruition, and by October 2013, their family expanded to include a son, fulfilling Muhammad's desire for an heir. Over the next couple of years, the family experienced a period of calm. Muhammad accomplished his goal of becoming a certified neurosurgeon with a focus on spinal injuries, earning recognition as a remarkable physician capable of achieving success in cases deemed hopeless by others. Ilana too made significant strides in her career, earning a position as a representative for the 11th District of the Ontario Medical Association. However, as Ilana's professional status grew, so did the strain in her relationship with Muhammad. To the external observer, their lives mirrored perfection, yet this facade masked the challenging dynamics and tensions simmering beneath the surface within the family. Once, Ilana sustained a cut on her palm necessitating stitches, and on a different occasion she sported a noticeable bruise on her neck. These injuries did not go unnoticed by those around her, yet she always provided a plausible explanation. By the summer of 2016, doubts about her husband's fidelity resurfaced for Alana. With their son staying with family friends Joe and Anna and their daughters away at summer camp, the couple marked their 12th wedding anniversary with vibrant social media posts. That evening, however, the topic of divorce surfaced in their conversation. Fed up with her husband's unfaithfulness and seeing no other way out, Ilana chose to engage in an extramarital affair with a married colleague. Seeking solace from the breakdown of her marriage, she found comfort in the attentions of someone who reignited her sense of being wanted. This liaison brought her to the realization that her marital relationship with Muhammad was irretrievably broken. By late November 2016, the situation reached a tipping point. Ilana concluded that she could no longer endure the emotional turmoil, sacrifice, manipulation, and harsh treatment that had characterized their years together. Muhammad's nature had not changed. He remained callous, unyielding, and aggressive. Resolved to move on, Elana decided to initiate divorce proceedings. On Friday, November 25th, after attending a medical conference, she returned home on Sunday evening and presented Muhammad with the divorce documents. She had already sought legal advice, directing her husband to disclose complete financial details. Shamji was unable to come to terms with this shift in their marital status, and tragically, just four days after being served with the divorce papers, on Thursday, December 1, 2016, Alana mysteriously disappeared without a trace. The evening prior, Anna had a conversation with her daughter, but by the following day, she could no longer reach her daughter's cell phone. Every text message went unanswered. Thus, the concerned mother reached out to Muhammad to inquire about her daughter's whereabouts. Calmly, her son-in-law claimed she had vanished into the night carrying a suitcase, intending to meet the man she was allegedly seeing. However, her parents were skeptical. Knowing her daughter's neighbor, who had previously been her supervisor, Anna requested she covertly monitor Alana's residence. It was discovered that Alana's vehicle remained parked in the garage. By 5 a.m. the next day, the Frick family appeared at Shamji's doorstep. The silence from their daughter was overwhelming, and they harbored a deep suspicion that Muhammad played a part in this. Consequently, they alerted the authorities, gathered their belongings, and set off for Windsor from Toronto that same evening. With an extra key, Anna and Joseph accessed the house. It appeared tidy, except for two missing doormats on the main level, and the landline was disconnected. The grandparents then made breakfast for the grandchildren. When Muhammad appeared, he did not offer greetings, but instead reproached Alana's parents for contacting the police. Indeed, 
law enforcement had already inspected the premises the previous day. Mohammed had told the police the identical tale of his wife's infidelity and her departure with a suitcase. Yet this narrative did not align with the image of a loving and devoted mother to three children. Alana would never abandon her family in such a manner. This deep-seated suspicion unfortunately proved correct, as on December 2, 2016, a devastating find was made. A firefighter, while walking his dog by the Camber River near Nashville Road, stumbled upon a large suitcase cast off beside the bridge. He immediately notified the local authorities, who hastened to the site to inspect the contents of the suitcase. Within, they found a woman's body, bearing evidence of physical abuse and bruises. It didn't take the authorities long to identify the victim since Alana Shamji's name was tagged on the suitcase. Her missing persons report had already been lodged. The police promptly informed her immediate family and dispatched the remains for an autopsy. Within a few hours, DNA analysis verified that the body was indeed Alana Frick Shamji's. In the meantime, Muhammad sought the support of his brother, who had arrived from out of town. They traveled southwest, passing through Mississauga. By around 8 p.m., they paused to grab coffee. Onlookers saw them rendezvousing with a man dressed sharply, presumably a legal advisor. Fearing Muhammad intended to escape abroad with his brother, the police acted swiftly, apprehending him at the coffee shop for allegedly taking his wife's life. This arrest marked Muhammad's final moments of liberty. The most harrowing and brutal aspect of this tragedy is that Ilana's children were indirect witnesses to her demise. On the morning of December 1st, a violent confrontation broke out between Ilana and Muhammad, continuing their history of tumultuous arguments. In a panic, Ilana misdialed 911, pressing the wrong initial number. Muhammad's inability to accept her divorce proposal drove him to fury. Their oldest daughter overheard the commotion and saw her father in a compromising position on the other side of the bed without a view of her mother or what was beneath him, before being told to return to her room. After completing his grim task, Mohammed packed Alana's body in a suitcase and loaded it into his car. Desperate, Mohammed was uncertain about disposing of the suitcase. He ended up throwing it from a bridge hoping the Camber River would sweep it into Lake Ontario. However, the suitcase landed on the riverbank instead. He returned home, acting as if nothing was amiss, prepared breakfast for his kids, drove them to school and went about his day, including performing significant surgeries. To cover his tracks, he texted his late wife, feigning normalcy by mentioning taking the kids to school and inquiring about her whereabouts. Furthermore, he transferred all the family's liquid assets, totaling over $640,000, into his lawyer's trust account. The autopsy findings disclosed that Alana suffered from a fractured neck and numerous broken ribs, with asphyxiation determined as her cause of death. Prior to the disposal of her body, her head was shaved. She was left barefoot and clothed in her pajamas. Intriguingly, just five months before this tragic event, Ilana had lightheartedly shared a picture of Muhammad on social media, captioning it, Dr. M.O. can break your neck and then fix it, a grim prelude to what would happen to her. Aware of the slim likelihood of evading conviction, Muhammad initially maintained his innocence. However, months into the proceedings, he opted for a plea of guilty, thus preventing their 12-year-old daughter from having to give evidence. At his sentencing, the esteemed surgeon acknowledged his actions as the utmost betrayal against a woman who had devoted her life to serving others, particularly him, leading to his conviction for murdering Ilana Frick. As a citizen of Canada, he received a life sentence with the potential for parole after 14 years, indicating he might be eligible for release as soon as 2030. Despite this, Anna and Joseph Frick wish for a more severe penalty, arguing that life imprisonment does not suffice for the gravity of his crimes. Ilana Frick is commemorated as a skilled professional who significantly contributed to the healthcare sector, a wonderful mother to her three children, and a devoted daughter. Holding an impressive education, financial independence, and having embarked on a journey of self-discovery and autonomy, her life was cut short by her husband's refusal to accept her independence. 
Ilana's memorial service was held on December 17, 2016, at the very church where she was baptized and married. Following the tragedy, Anna and Joe moved into their late daughter's home to support their grandchildren in adjusting to a new life without their parents. Muhammad, once a respected neurosurgeon, not only destroyed his own family, but also affected countless patients who depended on his expertise and are now left without his care. Should he ever be released, his license to practice medicine will be irrevocably revoked, barring him from the profession permanently. This is the end of the story. Like the video and leave your thoughts in the comments. This was Jeremy. See you soon.